After a series of coups in the African continent, the presidents of the remaining coup-free countries are more than scared. It's because a wave of coup has started and nobody knows which country will be next. During this debate, Sierra Leone, a country on the southwest coast of West Africa, comes into the spotlight. Many experts believe that already, the military might have already started preparing for a coup there. Since 2018, President Julius Mata Bio has been the sole power holder in the country, coming after a democratic election. However, does that mean he cannot be overthrown? Well, his wife had earlier said that his husband had a PhD in coups, so nobody could overthrow him. But does his ability to predict coups before they come stand to this day and what he has to say about the possible coup in Sierra Leone that can manifest within a few days? Let's know about that as he opened himself up in a recent interview, revealing what he thinks about the coup that can overthrow him. Let's get started. Sierra Leone has enjoyed a period of stability since the conclusion of its civil war in 2002. However, the nation has encountered domestic challenges in recent years. In the previous year, hundreds of citizens took to the streets in response to mounting inflation and economic hardships. Unfortunately, these protests escalated into violence, resulting in the loss of lives. But still, a coup against President Julius Mata Bio did not surface. In June, Bio's first civilian administration was inaugurated after his earlier role as a coup leader in the 1990s. This administration garnered recognition for its advocacy of education and women's rights. Nevertheless, given the spate of coups in the region, concerns have emerged about Sierra Leone potentially facing similar risks. During an interview with Al Jazeera, President Julius Mata, Bio offered insights into Sierra Leone's post-Civil War progress and ongoing challenges. Sierra Leone has evolved into a peaceful democratic nation that has made significant developmental advancements. The brutal and harrowing era of the Civil War now recedes firmly in the past. Sierra Leone has drawn essential lessons from this traumatic period and is resolute in sharing its experiences with the global community. In addressing the persistent trauma stemming from the war, President Bayo candidly admitted that Sierra Leone has yet to fully address this issue. Unfortunately, the peace settlement did not contain provisions for trauma healing. The war's grim legacy includes a death toll exceeding 70,000 and appalling acts of mutilation. While the trauma lingers, the active involvement of local communities has played a pivotal role in facilitating Sierra Leone's healing and recovery. Regarding concerns related to regionalism and tribalism, President Bio acknowledged that remnants of these divisions endure within the country. It's important to note that the civil war was not primarily rooted in ethnic or regional factors, he said. Many observers labeled it as a senseless war because it lacked a distinct ideology. Instead, the conflict was fueled by a myriad of issues, including poor governance, corruption, and social injustices that ultimately precipitated the conflict. While some still perceive it as an ethnic conflict, Sierra Leone is dedicated to overcoming these divisions and forging a unified path forward, Julius Mata said. Regarding the African countries kicking off foreign troops and UN peacekeeping missions, President Julius Mata shared his insights. He said that at a certain point in the country's history, it hosted nearly 18,000 UN peacekeepers. However, the turning point in Sierra Leone came with the deployment of 800 British paratroopers in 2000. Fast forward two decades, and there seems to be little appetite for such extensive international interventions in Africa. The world's attention is currently consumed by various crises, leaving little room for a large-scale UN intervention. President Julius Mata Bio underscores the vital role played by local actors, particularly women, paramount chiefs, and various organizations that were involved from the outset of the conflict. Their contributions were instrumental in nurturing hope and resilience during those tumultuous times. While their presence may not have received widespread international recognition, their efforts significantly contributed to sustaining the fabric of society and fostering optimism about an eventual end to the war. When addressing the sustainability of peace and the prevention of relapses into conflict, he said that it is essential to acknowledge that Sierra Leone's people were resolute in their determination to end the war. 
The efficacy of UN peacekeeping missions has been a subject of debate, with questions raised about their effectiveness. The UN mission in Sierra Leone, which concluded in 2006, is often viewed as a successful example because it managed to disarm various armed groups. However, the results of UN peacekeeping missions have varied. For instance, a large UN peacekeeping mission in Mali failed to effectively quell violence and is now being withdrawn from the country. Similarly, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the UN has maintained a presence for decades, yet violence continues to persist. President Bio believed that there is still a role for UN peacekeeping, but he emphasized that a genuine desire for peace within the country is paramount. The key actors within the country, spanning political, cultural, and other spheres, must be willing and prepared to support the peace process. While Sierra Leone's experience may not receive ample attention in the existing literature, the nation's significant role in ending its war should be recognized as a valuable case study applicable to various contexts, he said. Even if President Bio, as the election results were announced, opposition leader Samora Kamara alleged that live rounds were fired at his office. In response, President Bio clarified that no shots were fired and investigations carried out by both the police and international observers failed to uncover any evidence of such incidents. He acknowledged the inherent contentious nature of elections, where the truth can often become a casualty, with some individuals making statements to gain international sympathy. During the interview, the controversial aspects of the election were further explored. President Bio required 55% of the vote to avoid a runoff, and the election commission officially reported that he had obtained 56%. However, an independent coalition of civil society groups, National Election Watch, estimated his support at only 50%. This creates problems because many believe President Julius Mata did not get the majority he needed. In turn, this creates sentiments of coup because, for many, including the factions in the military, he isn't a legitimate leader. There were concerns from specific districts about more votes cast than registered voters, and the European Union expressed mistrust in the electoral process. In response, President Bio confidently stated that he would emerge victorious in another election, highlighting his dedication to the country. He maintained that the election was conducted fairly, transparently, and with integrity, stressing that contentious elections were a global phenomenon, referring to the ongoing debate surrounding President Biden's election in the United States. Expanding the conversation to the wider regional context, President Bio highlighted the recent shifts in power in neighboring nations, often occurring through coups rather than elections. Mali, Guinea, Burkina Faso, and Gabon were cited as examples of these developments. Additionally, he noted that between 2008 and 2017, there were no coups on the African continent, prompting reflection on the evolving dynamics in the region and the factors that might be driving these changes. President Julius Matabio scrutinized the unfolding situation, highlighting the need to comprehend the root causes behind the recent coups witnessed in several nations. While diverse rationales have been put forth to justify these coups in countries such as Gabon, Guinea, and Mali, President Bio stressed the importance of gaining a comprehensive understanding of why this trend had swiftly gained traction, impacting various West African countries. In response to a question regarding the commonality of the French language spoken in these nations, particularly in former French colonies, President Bio exercised caution against hastily drawing conclusions. He considered it premature to determine if linguistic connections were purely coincidental. Instead, he advocated for a collaborative effort to unravel the developments in the region and devise strategies to contain the proliferation of extra-constitutional changes. The conversation then shifted to ECOWAS, the regional group's response following the coup in Niger when President Mohamedou Bazoum was ousted in July. Initially, ECOWAS had declared its intention to intervene militarily, but this approach underwent a transformation. President Bayo elaborated on how the coup leaders exhibited a willingness to engage in dialogue, prompting ECOWAS to think about peaceful discussions. Military intervention, though not entirely ruled out, was regarded as a less favorable course of action, particularly considering the unique context of Niger. Responding to a question about whether an ECOWAS military intervention necessitated a United Nations Security Council resolution, 
President Bio affirmed that such a resolution was typically the required procedure for intervening in another country. He underscored that ECOWAS would not proceed without the proper UN Security Council resolution. The interview proceeded to explore President Bio's own history as a brigadier in the military during the 1990s, his involvement in coups, and his subsequent assumption of power as the military head of state. He said that Sierra Leone had just emerged from a protracted period of one-party rule, rampant corruption, and a devastating war. People were profoundly disillusioned, and the government was widely perceived as guilty for the turmoil. Within this crisis, he said that he and his fellow soldiers were motivated by a shared aspiration to bring democracy to the nation and end the prevailing suffering. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. But since, sometimes backed by Western nations, underscoring the core democratic principle of reflecting the will of the people. Transitioning to the broader topic of global engagement with Africa, the interview referred to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, established in 2015 with the objective of advancing humanity while leaving no one behind. When he was asked about whether countries like Sierra Leone still felt marginalized, President Bio affirmed this sentiment. His concern extended to include the entire African continent, with an emphasis on the ongoing struggle to reform the United Nations Security Council. He highlighted the Council's disproportionate focus on African affairs despite the continent's significant population. President Bayo emphasized the need for equitable representation and pointed out the lack of tangible progress in securing an African seat on the Security Council. His interview shows that he is somewhat scared of a possible coup in his country against him. The threat is not impossible because earlier, he busted a coup attempt, arresting various senior officers. In August this year, it was reported that Sierra Leone's police force had apprehended several individuals, including high-ranking military officials, on suspicion of planning violent actions against the country's citizens. According to the statement, the security sector had been closely monitoring the activities of specific individuals, including senior military personnel, believed to be working against the peace and stability of the nation. The statement further explained that in response to these concerns, multiple arrests were conducted, and the individuals in question are actively cooperating with law enforcement during the ongoing investigations. The statement also divulged that the suspects had allegedly planned to exploit upcoming peaceful protests scheduled for the following week as a guise for initiating violent attacks on state institutions and innocent civilians. It's noteworthy that on August 10, 2022, a series of economic and political protests in the capital city of Freetown and other urban centers escalated into fatal confrontations. Official records indicate that on that day and in the days that followed, 27 civilians and six police officers lost their lives. Amnesty International had collected testimonies suggesting the excessive use of force during these incidents and had condemned the subsequent restrictions imposed on internet access. Later, Sierra Leone conducted general elections on June 24, resulting in the official re-election of President Julius Mata Bayo for a second term. However, the opposition has contested the election results. International observers had noted statistical inconsistencies and criticized the lack of transparency in the vote counting process following the election. In light of these developments, the opposition has refused to participate in local or national government, with almost all members of parliament boycotting parliamentary sessions. The arrests were carried out with the aim of preventing any attempts to overthrow the democratically elected government of President Julius Matabio, similar to the recent events in the Republic of Niger, when President Mohamed Bazoum was removed by a military junta. Therefore, it becomes quite clear that a coup is not impossible. Rather, an attempt has already been carried out. It is yet to be seen whether President Julius Mata Bion can survive another coup attempt. However, recently, his wife Fatima Bio said that his husband had a PhD in coups, perhaps showing that he can predict the coups before they happen. Her comments came in the context of unrest in Sierra Leone, during which six police officers and at least 21 civilians lost their lives in August as citizens took to the streets to voice their frustrations. The protests were primarily driven by economic difficulties, 
and the perception that the government had not done enough to alleviate the impact of rising prices. Notably, these demonstrations occurred in areas where opposition support was strong. Attributing the protests to the opposition, President Bayo alleged that they were part of a larger scheme to overthrow his government, a move that resulted in the removal of the top three army officials, as reported by BBC News. During a fundraising event held in the United States over the weekend, the First Lady, Mrs. Bayo, accused unnamed individuals of harboring intentions to unseat her husband. That's when one is forced to ask, who is Julius Maada Bio, and can he be the next President Bazoum, ready to be overthrown? Julius Maada Wonye. Bio was born on May 12, 1964 in Tihun, a village located in the Sogbini chiefdom of Bonthe district in the southern province of Sierra Leone. His birth took place three years after Sierra Leone had gained independence during the premiership of Sir Albert Margai from the Sierra Leone People's Party. Julius Maada Wonibayo is the 33rd of 35 children born to Sherbro Paramal, Chief Charlie Bayo of Sogbini Chiefdom, who had nine wives. He shares his name with his paternal grandfather, Julius Maada Wonibayo, who also served as a Sherbro Paramount Chief in Sogbini Chiefdom. Identifying as an ethnic Sherbro, Julius Maada Woni Bio practices the Roman Catholic faith. His educational journey began at the Roman Catholic Primary School in Tihun, Bonte District. Subsequently, he relocated to reside with his older sister Agnes, who worked as a primary school teacher in Pujahun. There, he completed his primary education at the Holy Family Primary School in Pujahun. Following this phase, his older sister Agnes, arranged for his enrollment at the Bo Government Secondary School in Bo, a prestigious boarding school. Julius Maada Bio spent seven years at Bo School, eventually rising to the position of school prefect. He successfully graduated from Bo School in 1984, having obtained A-level qualifications at the age of 20. After completing his secondary education in 1985, at the age of 21, Bio applied for admission to Fora Bay College in Freetown. However, he opted to enroll in the Military Academy of the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces, located in Bengema, just outside the capital city of Freetown. Under the guidance of Major Fala Sewa, the head of cadet training at the Military Academy, he underwent training as a cadet officer. In October 1987, at the age of 23, Julius Mada Abayo graduated from the Military Academy attaining the rank of second lieutenant in the Sierra Leone Army. Initially, he was stationed at the Lungi Garrison in Port Loco District. Later in the same year, he was reassigned to Cambia District, where he joined the Economic Emergency Unit, established by President Joseph Saidu Momo, to combat smuggling and address other criminal activities along the Guinean border. In 1990, the Sierra Leonean government contributed military personnel to the West African Peacekeeping Force, Eco Mog, with the mandate to maintain peace during the Liberian Civil War. Julius Mata Bio and several other Sierra Leonean soldiers, including Captain Valentine Strasser and Lieutenant Solomon Musa, were deployed to Liberia as part of Sierra Leone's contingent within Eco Mog. After serving as an Eco Mog soldier in Liberia for a year, the Sierra Leonean government issued orders for Bio and several other Sierra Leonean soldiers stationed in Liberia to return immediately to Sierra Leone. They were directed to report to the army barracks in Daru, Kailahun district, where they would contribute to a newly formed 600-man battalion of soldiers. During his time as the military head of state, Bio played a crucial role in transitioning Sierra Leone back to a democratically elected government. He facilitated the peaceful transfer of power to Ahmad Tejan Kaba of the Sierra Leone People's Party following Kaba's victory in the 1996 Sierra Leonean presidential election. After retiring from the military in 1996, Bayo relocated to the United States, where he was granted political asylum. It wasn't until 2005 that he returned to Sierra Leone from the United States. In the 2012 presidential election, Bayo ran as the presidential candidate for the Sierra Leone People's Party, but secured only 37% of the vote losing to the incumbent president Ernest Bai Karoma, who received 58% of the votes. However, 
in the 2018 Sierra Leonean presidential election representing the main opposition, Sierra Leone People's Party, Bayo emerged victorious in the runoff vote against Samura Kamara of the ruling All People's Congress. Bayo secured 51.8% of the votes, while Kamara garnered 48.2%. The election was widely regarded as free and fair by international and local observers. In 2023, he was re-elected as the president. However, this election has been criticized, often receiving allegations of rigging. Before the election, there has been growing opposition against him, but after the election, it has exacerbated, leading to the possibility that he too will soon be overthrown. What do you think? Will Sierra Leone join the list of African countries undergoing a coup? What will happen if there is a coup in Sierra Leone and how will it be another defeat for the West in Africa? Let us know your thoughts on which more African countries can see a coup within the next few days. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching and until the next video, stay tuned.